How's everyone this morning? Morning. morning. <laughs> all right, can morning, we all Joe. please uh, take our seats and get ready for church? church is shout. I should just shout. <laughs> all right, um, welcome to church. Um, it's good to see everyone this morning. Um, it's been a new year. I think I'm seeing most people for the first time this year, so happy new year. Um, I've, been, I've been asked to bring a word this morning, um, a real scripture, as well as pray to kick off the service. I couldn't really think of a scripture to bring, but there was something that was quite on my mind, the scripture that kept going on in my mind. Um, and I don't know what this is going to bless, but um, I'll read it out. Um, so this is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Um, it says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So I kind of feel like that's for someone for 2023. Um, we all know there's quite a lot of things going on around the world in government um, and sometimes in our personal lives. And 2023 may seem to be challenging, even though it's just started. But I feel like God has got a plan for this year. Um, I feel like He's going to reveal His glory this year. And I feel like this word of encouragement that though things may not look good, um, He's promising that He's going to walk with us all through the way. And we'll have full cause to glorify His name at the end of it. All right, let's pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you because. Where to my God, a new name, you're there. We thank you because you're here today, your presence is here. Uh, Father, as we've come to gather to worship you today, um, as well as to hear from you today, we ask that you meet each and, every one of us, each and every one of us at the point of our needs. We ask the Lord that at the end of today, Lord, that only you would have the glory. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, let's stand, let's worship. There will be glory after this. 
be glory. There will be glory after this. No need to worry. No need to worry. This presence of rain. There will be glory after this. The joy. Oh, the joy. The joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, 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 oh He is my hope. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. There is a king seated on his throne. face who I've had to tear from my face joy this is the joy of the Lord joy this is the joy of the Lord this is the joy of the joy this is the joy of the Lord this is the joy of the joy the joy of the Lord, the joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, 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 oh He is my hope. The joy.
that the joy of the Lord is your strength. We're singing it, but I'm not seeing a lot of joy in the house this morning. We are free in Christ. He set you free. So whatever journey you've been on recently or this week, the one truth remains. He is the one and true living God. He sets the captives free. He is your salvation. He is your hope. He is your joy. He is your peace. He is your freedom. He is your healer. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. We will praise you in this place this morning. We will lift you high in this place, God. We will honor our King this morning. We will honor you, Father God, and bring our worship as a sacrifice to you this morning, Father God. God is a good God. He is faithful God. He is a faithful God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're faithful, Lord. We worship you, Jesus.
sit in his presence and listen to his voice and let him love on you this morning let him encourage you this morning let him tell you how precious you are sons and daughters of the living God the king of kings and the lord of lords he chose you
victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to church just for a few moments just lift your hands in the presence of God he's a good father 
name's a great God. The song that we sang just before this one, it just reminded me the verse of Scripture. If God can be for us, then who can be against us? Because victory belongs to our God. One of his names is Victor, isn't it? That's who he is. Why don't you declare that this morning? Over your life, God, you are victor. Declare that this morning over this house. God, you are victor. Declare it this morning over your family. God, you are victor. Declare it this morning over your workplace, over your family, over your friends, over this city. Our God is the victor. If God is for us, then who can stand against us? Not any principality or power, not any spiritual wickedness in high places. They have all been defeated. They have all been defeated. They are under your feet. God is the victor. If God is for us, I can't hear you, church. If God is for us, then who can be against us? Our God is the victor. He is the victor. He is the victor. We bless you, God, in your house this morning. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You are God. You are God. We bless you, oh God.
Sometimes you have to see things before they happen. It's called faith. But sometimes you have to hear things before they happen also. Prophetic words that we've been singing there, I hear the chains falling. You can in the spirit. You can see them fall and you can hear them fall. Because we're not bound anymore. No, we're not bound anymore. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Is there anybody free in this house? Is there anybody free in this house? Is there anybody in love with Jesus in this house? Where's the freedom? Where's the freedom that Christ brought for you? Why didn't you just release that in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. Yes, God. Yes, God. Father, Father, in Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, yeah, yeah. I just want to pray just before we move on, church. We believe He's the chain breaker. Hello? We believe He's the chain breaker. I also believe he breaks addictions. And maybe you have an addiction in this house. Maybe there's something that you're carrying in your life that's been going on for years and years and years. I want to pray this morning that God breaks that. Because we're Christians doesn't mean we're perfect. Come on. Romans 6, 7, and 8 tells us we have the battle going on between the sinful nature and the Spirit of God. And sometimes we have habits in our lives that are not godly. Come on, you can tell the truth. Sometimes we don't. But our God is not only the chain breaker, He breaks addictions. He breaks bad habits. He breaks the things that are ungodly in our lives. Sorry for a moment. Can we all just raise our hands in the presence of God? I'm not going to ask you to come forward. I'm not... Listen, you know what it is. And the Spirit of God just might be pushing you around a little bit and just saying, okay, you need to deal with this. You need to bring this before my throne of grace this morning. You need to surrender this. And do you know what He'll do with those ungodly things, what He'll do with those addictions? He'll remove them and they'll place them and He will replace them with Himself. He doesn't leave us empty and void. Our minds are not cleared and emptied our minds are renewed and so this morning why don't you just surrender those things to God right now bring it to the chain breaker 
the addiction breaker. That those unholy things in our lives, God, would you touch them because everything you touch becomes sacred. Would you touch them, God? Holy Spirit, give us the power not to walk back in that way again. Create a new mindset, Father, in our, in our minds, God. New paths of which to go to rather than back to the ungodly ways or the addiction. Father, you said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. God, you said you'd walk with us. And so, Father, as we would just surrender these things to you this morning, Father, that you would walk with us and create new paths in our thinking, create new godly habits in our lives. Because we truly want to say at the, the second Sunday in 2023, the old is gone and the new has come. See, church, when the Bible says God's doing a new thing, it's not just talking it's a new day. He's not saying, well, here's the sun rising again. He said he wants to do a new thing in us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can't hear you. In Jesus' name. In the name that is above every other name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 You be seated. I love church. Anybody else love church? Morning. If you're not awake, if that worship has not wakened you up, we need to come pray for you. I just love the, listen, I love the quiet. I love the, the intimacy parts with God. I love the part where I can just pick up my flute and just pray. But some of the louder songs, it's really hard because I can't move my fingers that quick. I'm, not, I'm getting a little bit old. My fingers don't move as quick as they used to. Oh, thanks, Norma. But I, I just love it. But I, I love the shout. I like there's something in the shout, in the release. There's something in the, in, in the shouting. You know, shout forth to God with a voice of... Yeah, okay. That the power of God would be released. You know he's not dead, don't you? Thanks, Israel. You know he's not dead, don't you? You know he's in the house, don't you? Sorry, did I waken you? I, I got loads of stuff that I want to get through. I want to bring um, some vision for this year, some of this stuff. I want to uh, pray through some people. I, I pray through people. I'll pray for people. Um, pray through some people, yeah. <laughs> but I think there was just some holy moments there with God. There was just things, even before we get into his word, because God can change us in worship. Don't look at me like I've got three heads. God can change us even in worship. In his presence, his fullness. So that means all the stuff that's not joyous has got to go. Yeah, away. He's just an incredible God. Just an incredible God that we serve. Yeah, come on. I didn't know if the time had passed for me to share it, but my phone's talking, I don't know why. No, it's, a, it's Bixby, Samsung, you see, I changed. Um, I, I didn't know whether to share it or not, but I keep feeling this pressing from, from God to share this verse. So I'm going to share it. It's in Psalm 24, um, and it's quite a famous one. Psalm 24, I don't know if you want to put it up there or read it in your Bibles or whatever. Verse 7 says, Lift up you heads, O gates, be lifted up you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty. He is the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty. He is the Lord mighty in battle. And when I was reading this verse, it's that part where it says, the Lord is mighty in battle. And I kept getting that, and I kept getting that. It says, lift up your heads, O gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. And sometimes there are doors that are closed in our lives that are shutting us from having joy. So say if we're standing here and there's a door, and Pastor Phil is joy, like the, just the joy, the source of joy, right? We're going to pretend there's a door 
right in the middle that I can't get to. And I feel like some of you today have got a door, have got a gate in your life that is stopping you from receiving the joy of the Holy Spirit, from receiving the peace of God. And sometimes we're fighting a battle. Um, we, we feel like we're fighting it and we're just losing the battle every time we fight it. But every time we sang today, the victory belongs to him. The victory belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah, you have bought the victory. So there is victory in Jesus and he is the Lord God Almighty. He is the Lord strong in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Jesus is the King of glory, and we have Jesus in us. So when we want peace, all we have to do is go through Jesus. And sometimes we find it hard to battle and battle on Lord and thinking, Lord, I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm stressed, I'm anxious, I've got pain, I've got sickness, I've got all of these things that are stopping me from getting joy, I've got all of these things that are stopping me from getting where I want to be, but God is saying, go to him because he is the king of glory, he is the Lord, strong, uh, God almighty, he is the Lord, wait, he is the Lord mighty in battle, he will battle this for you. All you have to do is go to him and he will win the battle. Do you know why? Because there is no other God like ours. There is no other God like ours. Allah won't save you. Harry Krishna won't save you. But the Lord Jesus, the Lord strong and mighty will save you. Will bring you peace. Will bring you joy. And that's what I wanted to share. I didn't know if it was too late, but I felt God um, sharing that with me. So thank you, Pastor Phil. Thanks, mate. You believe it? I've been called many things in my time, but never joy. So thank you. So you want a little bit of joy? Cuddles are free. Okay, we've got a few announcements, two things you want to get through. Um, we're going to bring you up in a second, Zoe, and uh, the newest member of our fellowship. We'll bring you up just in a few minutes. Uh, before we do that, uh, we have some changes to our leadership that we're making this morning. We're bringing in three new deacons. And uh, we've been looking, praying about this, seeking God about this. And it's certainly not the end of what we want to do, but it's going to help us move into what God wants us to do. I really believe God has his hand on this house. And he's doing something incredibly special, something powerful. And he's moving forward into everything that God has for us. So I'm really excited about this and what God wants to do in us and through us in Jesus' name. So I'm going to invite those guys to come forward. Alan, um, Daniel, and Joe. Uh, so please go. Can you welcome them? Chica, come and Chica, come and stand with me. Come stand with me. And uh, I need to know that these guys. Uh, I set an emergent leaders course up a couple of years ago. It took two years to do it, and uh, these guys have all been through it. They've been part of it. They've walked through it. Um, some of their essays were actually quite good that they had to do, and uh, it was just really a, a joy and an honor. Um, just to work with these guys over the last couple of years. Uh, and like I said, you know, there's something really special that God is doing here. Something really special. And so, um, obviously, there's five. Rachel's not here this morning. She's away on a retreat. So we're messaging her over the weekend, and she's not supposed to have her phone out. Apparently, it's one of these quiet retreat, re re retreats, retreats where you're not so... That didn't come out right, did it? Just take that off the camera. Um, one of these quiet retreats where you're not supposed to have your phone out, you're supposed to be quiet, and she was kind of telling herself off on the WhatsApp, I've got to put my phone away. Um, so our team goes from three and goes to six. And uh, so that really, really helpful to help stuff. And as well, I have my heads of ministries that we meet with every couple of months, and we share heart, and we share a little bit of church and stuff together. So it's really, really exciting what God is doing in us and through us in this house this morning. And uh, also, it makes me feel really old. Well, sorry, Alan, <laughs> um, um, but it makes us feel really old, and so these guys are part of it. Alan, as you know, is our treasurer. Um, um, Joe's going to take up the admin secretary side of things, uh, and of course, we've got the rest of the team that we'll share together. So in the next week or so, we'll get together, and we're setting out 2023. We met together last January, um, Chica, uh, Rachel, and myself, and we set out a five-year vision of what God wanted to do in this house, and I'm really excited about what he's doing. And so we're 12 months in. We had a little bit of difficulties with the, with the Constitution, as you know, and couldn't find it and found it and all sorts of stuff. So that put us back a few months. Um, but we're really excited at what God wants to do in us and through us. And you get to play your part. Because when I come to share in a few moments after this, some of the vision and plan that we want to put in place this, uh, this year and the next coming years, uh, you need to really roll up your sleeves and be part of what God's doing. 
There's lots of opportunity to get involved in many different areas of church life, evangelism, and other ministries that we have around the place. We need you to sign up for tea and coffee. Where's David? We need more on tea and coffee, Rhoda. More on the welcome team, Rhoda. We need more on our youth, Rhoda. More on our, on our um, children's, Rhoda, our 412. So, but we obviously, they go through DBS training and various other things. But we need you all to play a part of it because this is your church. Not my church. When I say your church, I mean this is the church that God has placed you into to play your part in. We know it's God's house, but you have a part to play. Every single one of you have a talent and a gift of which you can get involved in some way. So over these next 12 months, I will be speaking to some of you coming around. Can you roll your sleeves up? Can you get involved in this way? Is that all right? Will you stand with me? Will you raise your hands this, this way? I just want to take a moment just to pray over this team uh, this morning. Uh, if you're heads of ministry... Um, you know, that we've met. Could you just come out and just stand with these guys? If you're part of your overseeing ministry that we meet together uh, with me sometimes. So can you come and just, um, we want to take some time just to, uh, just to pray over these guys this morning. But come on, lift your hands this direction. Come in closer, come in closer. Put your hands on each other's shoulders if you can. I want to show the, the power of unity in this place this morning as we just, who are we missing? Where's the rest of our heads and ministries? There we go. Yeah, David's there. Um, Tim's snowboarding apparently, um, bless him, but apparently there's no snow, so he's just, he's just boarding. <laughs> Come on, you begin to pray. Would you pray in other tongues, other languages? Begin to pray over something special that God is doing in this house. Father, we want to thank you for, for the gift of leadership. Father, we want to thank you for these men and these women, Father, have said, yes, I hear the call. And I will pick up the mantle for such a time as this to move into everything that you've got for City Church. And so, Father, we bless you and we honor you this morning, Father, for their surrender to come bring everything and lay at your feet. And, Father, we just thank you, Father, for Chica, for Rachel, for Joe, for Alan, and for Daniel, and for the heads of ministries, Father, as we just begin to step out and step forward into everything that we have ahead of us. God, we know there's going to be challenges. We know there's going to be difficulties. But, Father, we know if you go before us, how can we fail? Father, if it's your vision and your plan, how can we fail? God, if it's your house and your building, you only make good and perfect things. And so, Father, we thank you and we honor you, Father, for such a time as this that you've called us at City Church to make a difference not just in this community, but in our city. To see many men and women, boys and girls, come under the sound of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that this truly, God, would be a year of harvest. Father, we thank you for the opportunities we have. And so, Father, we ask you this morning, would you bless them? Would you bless them? Would you place a fresh anointing upon every single one of them this morning as they step up and step out into everything that God has for them? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Ladies. Um, we're, we're Zoe and Cal. Is Callum with you? Can you bring your child that has about 12 names? Is April there? Is JJ there? Oh, hard to manage to do that. <laughs> Can you just show everybody our, our newest member of our church? Who wants to tell us all about it? Hello, give, us his, give us his full name. It's um, Elijah James Benjamin Daniel Upton. Getting that on a dedication certificate is going to be a challenge. <laughs> you managed to get Josiah's one on. I did actually. Did. <laughs> yeah. So tell us how, what weight is he? Or was he, he is. Born? He weighs five nine, and he was born on the fourth. Yeah. Even though I was supposed yeah. to be, in, even though I was supposed to be induced on the second, yeah. uh, didn't go as as to plan as we would like it. But we ended up having three days in the hospital, and then on our third morning, he was here. And how's he doing? Is he sleeping? Is he eating? His sleep is atrocious. <laughs> um, he has a nice like whimper that he he doesn't like any bed or anything. He doesn't he doesn't like any beds. He doesn't like any motors baskets. He doesn't like any next to me crib or nothing. And what about Callum? Is he eating and drinking? Is Callum eating and drinking okay? <laughs> to be fair, how are, you, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm I'm good? okay. Yes. Um, I've well obviously started going back into yoga. <laughs> it was, we was doing a lot of yoga through my pregnancy and now we're doing like a postnatal um, yoga and I'm slowly, well, 
quite quickly took the weight off. Oh, bless. Well, can we pray over you? Yeah. Can we pray over you? We had three children, and I'm still getting my figure back. It takes, it takes a little while for that to begin to happen. Sorry, can I ask you to stand again and, and put your hands this direction? Um, we just want to pray over them. I will not remember all his names. Elijah. Just call him Elijah. He's absolutely gorgeous. Come on. Helen, come and stand with me. Father, we just want to thank you for this precious family, the journey that they've been on. Lord, it's been incredible. But Father, you've been right in the midst of everything that's been going on here. And we thank you for Zoe and for Callum. And Lord, we thank you for this precious baby boy, Elijah, and for April and for JJ. Lord, we just thank you that they're part of this house. And Father, we pray over him, Lord, even before we get the time to dedicate him, Father, we pray over him that, Father, as he grows up, he will know everything about the presence of God. He will know what it is to use the sword of the Spirit. He'll know what it is to sing in tongues. He'll know what it is and who his heavenly Father is. And so, Father, we just bless them right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for them. And, Father, we just look forward to him growing up in this house just as we have with April and with JJ and seeing their little characters come out and them singing and all sorts of stuff. Father, we just want to thank you for them. So we bless you guys in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Come on, shall we give them a round of applause? It's really great. Okay, we're going to release our children and our young people now. Have a great morning upstairs. I know time is going on quite quickly. I will be as long as I as short as I can. I do believe um, in Margaret's village that they've started the work uh, with the well, and um, hopefully in the next week or so, we should have some photographs, hopefully some videos and stuff of that water just coming out and just blessing that community. Um, but listen, let me go through this this morning. Lots of stuff that I want to get through, lots of slides. Um, we had a week of prayer this week, Tuesday through to Friday. We call it a week of prayer. Obviously, there was a bank holiday, so we had four nights of prayer. We just had spent some time in the presence of God and just praying. Well, um, Elam have a, a night of prayer tonight. It's on the Elam YouTube channel to finish off the week. Um, Seven o'clock to nine o'clock, if you go on the YouTube it's there, and there's lots of things that you can, um, you can just follow on and pray through. So if you get some time tonight between 7 and 9 uh, to pray, if you're working or you can't make it, I'm sure it'll stay on YouTube for a little bit. Um, but that's on the U Elam's YouTube channel tonight between 7 and 9. Uh, this Wednesday night, we start our new Bible study. And I've been asking God and praying, God, what, what is it we kind of want to move us into? So um, what we're looking at from this Wednesday night, notes will be given out. We'll have a time of prayer. We'll have a time of worship together. And it's walking into your promised land and breaking some strongholds and walking into what God has for you. I'm doing this job over 25 years now. And, you know, the amount of Christians who don't know what the call of God is on their lives is, is really quite astonishing. And we'll pick up some of that stuff as we pray through with these things. God has a plan and a purpose for every single one of us. Our ministry might be our job. It could be our family. It could be our street. It could be anything. And so we're going to pick up on some of this stuff um, over the next uh, few weeks as we look through that. Uh, next Sunday morning, we've got Dr. John Andrews with us. Um, who was here last year when he was here. He's been here the last couple of years. An amazing, amazing teacher. And he's Irish. So I really want to encourage you next Sunday morning to come along. He's wrote some 13, 15 books. He'll bring them with him uh, next week. He's been such a blessing to this house over the last couple of times he's been here. Um, he has a website you can look at. You can order the books. Um, but certainly next week you can uh, buy some books off him next week. Um, some dates for your diary. Uh, 19th of February, uh, Pastor Paul Hudson is here. Uh, 5th of March, Chris Cartwright is here. And the 26th of March, Patrick Egan uh, is with us. Um, to give you an update, back and forth, talking uh, with um, Pauling. Uh, now we have some things that are coming through. Pauling comes home tonight, and uh, Helen and I will go and see her this week. We've just got to finalize the, uh, the funeral arrangements, but just to see her. Can I ask you just to continue to pray? Uh, she's finding it really difficult. They've been married for some 65 years or so, and uh, she's coming home to uh, her bungalow that when she left, Peter was with her. And so that's really quite difficult. So I know we've been back and forth and talking with her. And um, as much as she knew he was ill and he was ready to go home and they'd prayed that, it's still really, really difficult. And um, it's like when you come to services like this, the service is like for those people that are left, isn't it? Because Peter would not change places with anybody right now. 
he's in glory. And he's worshiping at the feet of Jesus. And he's getting to join in with the angels. And so I want to encourage you to come along. Um, it's on the Tuesday, the 24th of January, 2.30 here. There will be a service, uh, a burial before, which is family only. Um, so I want to encourage you to come along. And uh, they've sent these out to various people around and friends. So this place could be pretty packed on that day. Um, if you can help us, I know I've asked Daniel to get in touch with the musicians because we need a little bit of a band if we can do it. I know it's a work day. Uh, and I understand that. Also, we need to organize some tea and coffees. I don't know if you're around, David. I know you're working. Um, but if, you've got, if you can help us, if you're around, they're going to help on that day. Can you come and speak to myself or David just to let us know we need people to do tea and coffees? There are caterers that are coming in who will do the food side of things. But I've said that we'll, as a church, we'll do tea and coffee and we'll organize all the parking. Again, if you can help me on that to help us with parking, maybe some welcome coming in. Um, we'll get more um, parking passes because uh, there's people that are coming from different parts of the UK. And of course, we don't have a car park, um, but we have street parking. And so obviously, we will give those out. So we'll need some help on those things. Okay, so we're into 2023. I'm going to pass by that video because of time. I will put it on to the Facebook. Um, it's a message from Chris Cartwright. Uh, who's the general superintendent of Elam, and he will be, and he gives a 10-minute thing concerning Elam for 2023 and what lies ahead. It's a 10-minute video, so I'm going to leave that because of time, so I will pop that on um, to our Facebook page. Um, a Go Gently tour. Um, you've probably heard of Terry Waite. So he will be here in this building on Saturday, the 25th of March. And so he will be here, and Patrick Egan, him and his wife, um, who uh, run Kintsugi Hope, will be, he will be here, and also I think um, the lady up there in the corner, I think it's Patrick's niece, um, she is a professional cello player, and uh, our violinist, um, string instrument, um, so she will be here, and she also will be playing. Now, this is live now, so you can go on to um, Everbright and book your ticket in for the day, it's five pound for the day, you can go on and book it, I put it on to our Facebook page and on to various other places. I can send some links out. If not, I will send some links out. You just need to book your ticket in there. There's obviously a, a cost for this that's being put forward. And so when they go around, they recommend just putting that on. And that just covers uh, some of the costs that's around. Um, so, and then on that night, Patrick will stay over. We'll pop him in a hotel somewhere. And then he will come and speak with us on the Sunday. Okay, some of the things in 2023, we're hoping to do this on New Year's Eve, but we didn't get a chance to because we're in the cathedral, and then we had 11 o'clock service. Anybody up for a curry and quiz night? <laughs> Just the Upton boys in the back. <laughs> um, so we'll have a curry and quiz night. We'll give out some prizes. I'm thinking maybe we should give out a prize, maybe for a table where you can all go for a meal together or something, and that would be a couple of quid per night. We'll work it out. We'll work out the date. Um, but the church getting a little bit busier now with things on a Friday night with youth and young adults and things, which is absolutely brilliant. I love it. So trying to squeeze all the dates in, that will be a challenge. But we'll look at that and we'll let you know when that's happening. We will be having more prayer nights of worship and intercession. So again, we want to encourage you to come along. We'll take away the chairs that we've done before and we'll just come and sit in the presence of God. And so again, we'll put you all those dates in. We're going to do 40 days of prayer and fasting. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're not asking you to do all 40 days, but what I like to do uh, in church is have a fast as a church each year. And so last year we did the Daniel fast, the 21 days, do you remember? This, day, well, this time we'll do the 40 days. I'm not asking you to do the 40 days, but we will cover 40 days as a church. So I'll put the forms out on the welcome desk. You do what days you can cover. Just put in the initial, you don't have to put your full name, just so the whole 40 days are covered. I will give you a list of, of 40 days of the things to pray for. So every day as a church, we're praying for the same thing. So we'll cover all the ministries, we'll cover our government, we'll cover the world, we'll cover um, uh, our parliament, we'll cover all those stuff uh, within the 40 days. But again, we'll get the dates in for that when I meet together with my team in the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, things that really been on my heart that has been a very challenging thing to do um, because of COVID and things, we want to do two new initiatives this year concerning evangelism. Uh, first one is CAP, which is Christians Against Poverty. Uh, we live in a world now where, where debt is majority of, of people have some sort of debt, some sort of credit card debt or whatever that may be. 
And uh, so the Christians Against Poverty it helps people who struggle with finance. So they have some training and they sit down and help some people to deal with their finances and other helps that's along. So um, there's already uh, one of these things that's going. There's a hub already in Peterborough. We know the guy around there, uh, Ken Poland, and um, I've been in contact with him, talk with him. There's training has to be done, but we need a handful of people who have a little bit of understanding on finance that can help do the training that if anybody in this house is struggling with it or anybody that begins to come into the church or the connections we have with the school and any Thing that we've got a little bit more training that we're aware of that. So again, I will come and be speaking uh, to some of you guys about that. Alpha, anybody ever done Alpha? If you've done Alpha, just put your hand up. Well, I'll just have a look. And then about half the church has gone through some kind of Alpha course. Anybody saved on Alpha? No, you just went along because of the food? <laughs> there was no food at your Alpha? That wasn't done right. Um, so... Um, um, so um, we, I've done Alpha for years, and I know Kenny has, and Martin has, and a few other people. And uh, so we want to do Alpha, but we want to do it really, really well. So we want to make sure if we're going to do something, let's do it the best we can for God. And so again, we'll look at that. We'll look at the dates. It will be one night per week. And we'll do it. We want food and all that sort of stuff. We'll have different people sharing and, and talking. And then when it comes to the Holy Spirit weekend, we'll probably have a Saturday where we'll get people in, and we'll do that, and we'll pray for them and get them all filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, so um, these are two of the uh, evangelistic uh, initiatives that we're looking at. We also have our men's team and our women's team that, that we have running that will be part of that. So when they do outreaches, when they go for meals, the opportunity to invite non-Christians along with them. And of course, we have the school of which we're a part of uh, down there, and we, we help. And we took, I think, 60 hampers this year, as well as a hamper for the staff down there. The connection going on, the emails coming back and forth. They'll probably ask us to come in at Easter again, which is absolutely brilliant, because that door is opening a little bit wider each time as they get to know us as a church. So please continue to pray into those. Oh, there's our men's ministries and women's ministries, and I don't know why that's blank. Is that the end one? Is that the last one? Is there a bit more? So why is it not working? It was working this morning. It's, uh, it, that's um, Peterborough in the snow. Is, was that the last one, Joe? It was. Okay. Oh, okay. Is that the last one? Okay, brilliant. So that's some of the stuff that we're looking at. I'll start putting the stuff around the notice board of the various things that we're going to be looking at and getting involved. We want you to sign up uh, for some of those things and get involved. Okay, if you've got your Bibles, can you grab them? Um, for the time that we have left, um, you know, when you've been in church a long, long time, I like to kick off the new year with a message that's really kind of going to encourage us and set us up for the year. Obviously, last Sunday on the 1st, we just come from obviously New Year's Eve and stuff, so uh, I know Walter shared uh, last Sunday morning with us, but I just wanted to bring something, well, Elijah will happen in a couple of weeks, we'll finish Elijah off, and then there's some things that I'm looking into um, to pray into the church along those lines as well, um, and I'm thinking, God, what is it, what would be really helpful for us as a church and as individuals as we move into 2023, and I want to speak this morning on this, the power of of rest. The older I get, the more I enjoy my bed. Anybody else? I, I, as a teenager, I could never stay in bed. I could never stand. My kids could, my kids hibernate. They don't, you know, it's like 11, 12 o'clock, you know, he gets up after 12. I, when my kids get up, I say good afternoon, not, not good morning. And I, as, a, as, as a teenager, I, I could never do that. When it got to 8, 9 o'clock, that was, that was a lie-in to me. That, that was it. I had to get up. I don't know if it was because I was hyperactive or whatever it may be. But the older I get, when you get to bed, it seems to be when my head hits the pillow, I say, Helen, can you talk to me, please? Because that helps me go to sleep. And I just, sorry. And, um, but you just put your head up on. I can be gone. And then the mornings come along. I don't know about you, but the alarm always goes off far too early doesn't it? And especially in these mornings where it's been a lot darker, it seems a bit more difficult to get out of bed. And so as I began to think about this, the power of rest, let me give you a few quotes to start this. Jacqueline Crow said this, rest makes us better workers and better worshipers. Craig Groeschel, a pastor in America, says, most of us think we are too busy or too important f to rest for a day. Yet God did. Another person said this, biblical rest does not make us passive or unproductive. It is the secret to all productivity in the Christian 
life. Charles Spurgeon that you've probably heard of, he says this, rest time is not waste time. It is economy to gather fresh strength. It is wisdom to take occasional furlong. In the long run, we shall do more by sometimes doing less. Really, really important that we rest. Chuck Swindle, you've probably heard of, he says this, in the place of our exhaustion and spiritual fatigue, God will give us rest. All he asks is that we come to him that we spend time thinking about him, meditating on him, talking to him, listening to him, occupying ourselves with him, totally and thoroughly lost in the hiding place of his presence. I don't know about you, but sometimes when life gets a little bit chaotic, a little bit troublesome, I find myself running to God more and more and more because I know he's my hiding place. I know he's my place of safety. I know he's my place of refuge. He know he's a place that no matter what the enemy wants to throw at me, I am safe and secure. Like we, we sang this morning, I'm safe in the arms of Jesus. Rest is so crucial for our well-being. When you're a teenager and you're 20s coming through, you know, it's like, well, I, I can go to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning and up 6 o'clock the next morning. Yeah, but when you get to a certain age, that doesn't happen anymore. It just gets to a place, well, I, I, I need so many hours rest. Otherwise, I don't know about you, but if I don't have my rest, I get a little bit grumpy. Anybody else? Where's all the Christians telling the truth? Yeah, we, we do, don't we? We don't function, both hands up. We don't function the same when we've not rested properly. And I wonder if, if that's in the natural, I wonder if that happens in the spiritual. If we don't rest in the presence of God enough, does that affect us in our spirituality? Does that affect us in our relationship with God? Does that affect us in our relationship with each other? Does that affect us in the workplace when we're supposed to be salt and light? Does those things affect us in some way? In, in the Kintsugi Hope that we've, we've run twice now, the, the crucial thing that runs all the way through the 12 weeks is this. Exercise and rest for well-being. And that's what, and listen, that's not even coming from a spiritual perspective. That's what the world will teach. That's what they'll teach you in well-being. Are you exercising? Are you getting out? The whole thing when we were in lockdown and we were allowed out for walks is to have walk because it's good for your well-being. It's good for your figure, but it's good for your well-being. It's good for your mind to have that. Exercise is really, really important. And then the other thing is rest. If you're not resting correctly, then that affects us all. It can affect your health. And so it's really, really important that we learn to rest. If we don't rest enough, we can experience long-term health problems and in some cases, a shortened life expectancy. So it's really, really important that we learn to rest. Now, the Bible's got lots to say about rest. When I Googled this and looked it up, there was far too many scriptures for me to say, it says this, says this, says this. So I pulled a few out this morning. That hopefully it's going to help us. Matthew 11. You got your Bibles, your iPads, your phones? Somebody else's iPhone? Matthew 11 and verse 28 says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you... Now, I'm not talking about your bed now. I'm not talking about that nice mattress that you have and that really thick duvet and that lovely plumped up pillow where you can just lay down. Matthew is telling us here, in times of weariness, in times of difficulty, in times of trouble... In times when you're carrying burdens, the best place to find rest is God. When we're stepping in, we're already eight days into 2023. I don't know what the future holds, but I know one who does. I don't know what next week holds. I, yes, I've got plans. I've got stuff in my diary. I've got things that I've got to work through and people I've got to see. Yes, I have all of those things. You know you've got work and what shift pattern you're doing. You know you've got to take the kids to school this time and sport and after. You, you know all that stuff. But we really don't know, apart from the regular things, we really don't know what the future holds. But what I do know is I can find rest, even in the middle of all the chaos of everything that's going on in life. So it's important, important to know here that rest is not just talking about not working. I'm not just talking about chilling out and recharging our batteries. I'm talking about the rest comes from somebody who it comes from and who we rest with. 
So here in Matthew, he's saying, where's the rest coming from? It's coming from God. And who are you resting with? God. So listen, there's a time to chill out. There's a time to put your feet up. I like sometimes when I'm not out in the evening just to sit back, put my feet up, grab a packet of crisps, get the kettle on, and watch a good movie. Oh, you're up for that? It's all right. We'll have to go and do that. I love that because that's a, it's a switch off from what I normally do. I like to cook at home. I'm not the best cook at home, but I like to cook at home because it's something I don't normally do the rest of the day. I'm not talking about chilling. I'm talking about when life gets a little bit tough. Rest is offered from God and with God. And that's what he's offering us in the times of difficulty as we step into this new year. But rest here is also about trust. If you're saying, God, in all my weariness and all my burdens and everything that's around, you're saying, God, if I, you offer me rest and I rest with you, are you saying, God, then I can trust you with everything else that's going on around me? Of course you can. Can you trust him? Do you trust him? Because that's a different question. Do you trust him in the middle of chaos, in the middle of burdens, in the middle of your weariness? Do you trust him? If you trust him, learn to rest with him. Because I, I find that each year just seems to get busier and busier and busier. Does anybody else feel like that? Like it's just, got, just there's so much more to do. There's so much things you can do all the time. I look at my to-do list and I think it gets longer and longer and longer of all the stuff that needs to happen. As well as that, as my workplace, I've also got family, I've got friends, I've got commitments, I've got a arcade up here, there and everywhere because of his football and all the stuff that's going on, of which I absolutely love. But I've got to find some time to rest with him because he offers me rest. But to trust him. So we must allow ourselves to rest, church. We, we demonstrate the belief that God would provide for all the areas of our lives so we don't need to strive around, you know, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Some of us get so uptight and we've got to do this, we've got to do that. Some of you, you've got to just chill a little bit. You've got to trust him a little bit more. Just learn to rest a little bit in him. In Genesis chapter 2 and verses 2 and 3, it says, After God had finished working... On the seventh day, he rested. He blessed it and made it holy. Rest days are blessed days. Like the quotes that I read earlier, they're not just times where I'm not doing anything. Resting with God, sitting in your bedroom an hour with God is not wasted time. Don't think, oh, I could be doing this, I could be doing this, I could be doing this. Is doing this better or more fruitful than being with God? But we've got to change some priorities around a little bit. So he, he rested, he blessed it, and he made it holy. Now, we, we, we know Sunday is a like Sabbath. Yeah? We understand that a little bit. Do you remember, as, as I don't know what your upbringing was. My upbringing in Northern Ireland was very much, it's a Sabbath, it's a Sunday. No churches were opened. I wasn't allowed to watch TV on a Sunday. Anybody else? Yeah? I wasn't allowed to go to the shops on a Sunday. I'm allowed to buy anything on a Sunday. I actually signed when I was younger this form to fill in to keep Sunday observance. And I got a badge and I got a certificate to say, I will keep it holy. But I did go to the shop. And when my granddad was sleeping, I put the football on, on a Sunday. <laughs> Do you remember those days? Black and white TV. Little ball about this size, looked like I couldn't even see it, like a fleck of snow. But when we begin to understand Sabbath, my understanding of Sabbath has changed. Because what Sabbath is, is time set aside to spend time with God. If I'm just doing that on a Sunday, I've missed something. There's another six days that I've missed if I'm just setting aside Sunday to worship. Sunday to praise, Sunday to read my Bible. I, I'm missing something. I'm missing something completely. So this, the Sabbath was, was a blessing for God's people. Now for us, some of us have got to work on a Sunday, don't we? You've got different shifts. I have to work on a Sunday. I've even got to work on Christmas Day. 
New Year's Day. <laughs> Don't believe any of those odds. But the Sabbath was a blessing for God's people. It was the day that they didn't have to work. It was the day that was set aside. It was the day that they spent time with God. It involved rest and it involved communion. Now, it's really important we understand communion. I'm not talking about the little bit of bread that we have or the little bit of wine that comes around. I'm talking about communion with him and talking about intimacy, that John 15 of the vine and the branches and, and having that relationship. That's what it was all about. It was a coming away from the busyness of work uh, and life. And I, I, and, and I put this in my notes, and please hear my heart. Sometimes, and maybe some of us don't have a Sabbath. Maybe some of us don't have that regular time set aside each day just to be with him. Because it's not just here on a Sunday morning. Relationship with God is more than a Sunday morning. It has to be more than a Sunday morning. I don't think God would have sent his son if we just for people who were just going to meet on a Sunday and have a relationship with him on a Sunday. The price that was paid was far too great for me just to pick my Bible up on a Sunday. So Sabbath for me, every day. Now, you're free to disagree with me if you like, but every day for me is Sabbath. It's a day that I have with God. It's a day that I have communion with God. It's a day that I pray. It's a day that I worship. It's a day that I open God's word. That's my Sabbath. It's my relationship with him. Listen, it's for our benefit. It's our benefit. You're not gonna read a scripture to God and say, oh, I've not seen that before. Are you not going to pray to him and come up with some revelation and God saying, oh, that's really good, Phil. Let me write that one down. The communion and the rest is for our benefit. It's our benefit. Come on to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Is God weary? Is God burdened? Does God freak out because this Monday's coming? Does God ever get stressed? No. We're coming to a perfect God. And we come and he says, He's offering us to come to him and rest with him. That's what he's offering us. Mark 2, 27 said, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. God made this deliberately so man could hang out with him. What a privilege and what an honor because God knows the importance of rest and renewal. So we read it in Genesis 2, after God had finished working, he rested and we know that Adam and Eve were the last two creations that he made so their first full day as they were made on day six their first first full day as a couple was a day of rest so we rest to work not work to rest yeah if we have rested with God because the offer is there then my work has to be better than me working and then just coming and just go, oh, here's five minutes. We gotta make sure we get those, those things around, you know, and church, if we can pick this up for 2020, listen, some of you have got this. Some of you are running with this. Some of you are already doing this. But I felt that God placed this in my heart to help us understand that we have to find a place to rest with him every single day. Because listen, 2023 will be much better with him than without him. 2023, every single days of our lives will be better with him than without him. Don't give him the scraps of the day. You wouldn't give your kids the scraps of what's left after a meal, would you? No, parents would give their kids first. We hear of it in the news, don't we, where, 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 where parents, because there's not enough finance, are, are feeding their kids and parents are going hungry because they're looking after their kids first. Exodus 33, 12 to 14 says, Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, leave these people, but you have not let me know um, whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and you have found favor with me. But if you are pleased with me, teach me your way so I may know and continue and find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. I think Moses one of the greatest leaders in the Old Testament, probably one of the greatest leaders in the Bible. Would you look after a million um, mourning Israelites and walk through the desert with them? 
I think the leadership, listen, we know he had his faults and his problems, but who too doesn't? We know that he, he didn't get into the promised line because he, he struck the rock and he wasn't supposed to. But you think of his leadership. You think of the, 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 the Red Sea opening up. You think of him throwing the staff down and becoming a snake. You think of him striking the, water, the, the, the rock and water coming out. That, that's, a, that's a good leader. That's one who's following God. But I think he ministered out of his relationship with God, not tried to minister and then ask God for help somewhere down the line. He ministered out of that relationship. And church, that's what I'm trying to get across this morning. We minister and we do life out of a relationship with God, not just do life and then give God the little bit at the end. See, Israel throughout the Old Testament was often portrayed as a stressed and harassed people surrounded by hostile nations. They were known as ones who were under slavery and persecution. Listen, the Israelites were building bricks and blocks that were actually keeping them in slavery. They're building the, big, the bricks and the blocks to build walls around. So what they were building was keeping them in slavery. And as I was thinking about that, do you know what? Sometimes we're not resting and we're not doing things because you know what? We're creating our own problems. We're building stuff in our lives that's preventing us from resting. Sometimes we just got to say no to some stuff. True? If life was already busy and you can't do it, just put it on hold. I've got to deal with some of this stuff. I've got to work some of this stuff through. Sometimes, some of us are not very good at saying no. And we just need to learn to say no sometimes. And for actually, you know, this time is set aside. This time is set aside. This time is set aside. When we come through some of the things like our prayer nights and our 40 days of uh, prayer and fasting, all those things, earmark them. Put them in your diary. Let nothing else take that place. Put them in. Making sure that that's priority. My priority on that Friday night, on whatever night we have it, my priority is this. My priority on a Wednesday night, I'm coming to pray. I'm coming to worship. I'm coming to learn. I'm coming to find out the heart of God for my life. I'm coming to find out the direction. Some of you just got to make it priority. Don't just think, oh, 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 maybe I should go to Bible study tonight. Oh, or, maybe I should go to, or maybe I should go to the prayer meeting. We've got to be intentional. We've got to put these things in place and learn to move out of our lives from a relationship with God, not the other way around. See, Jesus promises rest for the weary. Psalm 4, verse 8 says, I will lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Listen, we have busy lives. Family, overtime, shifts, church life, housework. I understand housework. Somebody said to me, was it Kenny? I'm putting the Hoover away because there was lots of stuff around there this morning where I'd taken stuff away for Christmas and the tree and stuff. And I had the Hoover out and he says, it suits you. <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. I'm used to it. I, I don't, I don't it's, 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 it's no problem. And listen, we understand life is 100 miles an hour sometimes, but sometimes we just got to take a step back and see what's most important and hang out with a person that's most important. We're all dealing with struggles, the joys of life. And sometimes it's hard to get rest. Sometimes it's hard to get peace. Sometimes it's hard to feel, you know, that we're sleeping enough. But here's the key. Dwelling in safety is to dwell in hope and trust in God. That verse of scripture tells us in Psalm 4 verse 8, make me dwell in safety. Where's the safe place? Who's the safe person? We have to come to that place. You are safe and secure when your confidence is in God. Listen, the world doesn't offer this. Your doctor will not offer you a safe place. Unless they're Christian. And they can say it without getting in trouble. <laughs> He's the safe place. He's the place that's offered to us this morning. Come, come. He's saying, he saying, come. He's saying, come. If I, said, if I said to Chica this morning, or to Chris, or to anybody come forward, you know what, the, the problem you're dealing with, come now because God's going to deal with it right now. We take it. If I said to you this morning, you know, we're going to pray at the end, and what the weariness that you're carrying, the burden that you're carrying, you're going to leave without it. Would you take it? Yet scripture says, come to me who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Rest from your weariness. Rest from all the burdens that you're carrying. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon because he cares for you. Sometimes we just don't take God's word as it says. Let's carry a little bit longer. Oh, you know what? It's a bit of martyrdom. It's a bit, I'll carry some of this stuff. No, he wants you to be free. 
Did you hear the chains fall this morning? Did you see them fall in the spiritual realms? Did you break some of those addictions and some of those ungodly habits that we have in our life? He wants you to be free. He wants you to be rested. Listen, we should be the happiest people on the face of the earth. Have a look around. You should have the biggest grin on your face. You should be the most joyous person. According to Israel, I'm joy. And so free joy hugs will be given out on the door when you're leaving. Church people have got to know who our Heavenly Father is and they will know even without you opening your mouth because of your way you carry yourself and because of how you, your, count, your countenance are. How did they know Moses had been with God? He was so luminous. I don't know what the Hebrew word is. It. He was just luminous with the presence of God. He had to put a veil over his face. They couldn't look at him. He was carrying the glory of God so much. When was the last time somebody said to you, oh, you got some glory on you? It comes from a place of rest and intimacy with God. That's what 2023 has got to be about. We have all plans and purposes, but for you, 2023 has got to be about carrying the presence of God in glory and in might in that place of rest. You can try all those ideas out there. You can try your yoga. Nothing against yoga. I can't bend like that. I think if I bent like that, I think I'd break something. You can try all your meditations, and the world will offer all this stuff. But only God gives true rest. Only God gives true rest. A couple of more verses of Scripture, and then we'll finish. Psalm 55. And verses 4 to 8. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death assail me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, if I had wings of a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. Be at rest. I would fly far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to the place of shelter, far from the tempest and the storm. Listen, sometimes life is like this. There's always a place of rest. Always. Always a place of rest. It may feel like everything is against you. Everybody's against you. The psalmist is setting those things out. He's just saying, he's just saying, listen to my prayer, God. I feel like the only way to escape this is to fly away. To escape the troubles of life and everything it is, the place you will find rest is in him. And I don't need to be prophetic to know that 2023, I will get a phone call, I will get a text, I will get a message. Somebody will talk to me somewhere along this year in this house to say, Pastor, I need some help. I don't need to be a prophet to say that. Because life will throw some stuff at us. But I know greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. I know when trouble seems to overwhelm me, like the psalmist is saying, when everything is against me, I know where I can find rest. I know in times of trouble where I can go. The truth is the place of safety and the place of rest is only found in God as our refuge. So when you feel a bit distraught, rest in him. When you feel a bit frustrated, rest in him. When you feel in trouble, rest in him. When you are, whatever that next sentence is, whatever those words you put in, whenever you are this, 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 and this, rest in him. The psalmist goes on to say in Psalm 62, 1 to 2, he says, My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress I will never be shaken. So, life might get a little bit chaotic. It may get a little bit stormy. It may want to bring you some worry and some anxiety. But be at peace. Be at rest. There's several things that I, I really hate. I hate depression. I hate cancer. There's just things that I have an ungodly hate about that you know what, when people have that stuff, I just want to pray. I just want to pray. I just want to... Do you understand what I mean? And maybe you've got some of those things. When people are carrying anxieties, 
Just give them to him. I know that's easier said than done, but God tells you to do it. I'm not just telling you to do it as your pastor. God's telling you to do it. Give them to him. Why would you carry something that you're not supposed to carry? Give it to him. One more verse, Proverbs 3. I like this. Proverbs 3, 21 to 24 says this. My son, preserve sound judgment and discernment and do not let them out of your sight. They will be life to you, an, an ornament um, to grace your neck. They will go, sorry, then they will go on their way in safety and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. For when you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. That sounds like a word the kids use today. Sweet. Is that what the youth say? Are you pretending you're youth? Is that what they say, sweet? It's in the Bible, mate. Your sleep will be sweet. Anybody want some sweet sleep? That's a bit harder to say than I thought. Just in that place of his presence. I can't think of anybody other's presence I'd like to sleep in just in the presence of God. That it would be sweet even in my days of weariness, even in my days of carrying burdens and, and, and troubles, that even when my head hits the pillow, I can still rest, even though life is difficult, I can still rest. My mind does not need to be troubled because I find rest in him. In church, that's what we've got to get to. Sweet sleep, I really like that. Not restless tossing and turning in bed. Give God your worries and your concerns. You will sleep better. You will sleep better. Good sleep, fully rested. And I just put in my notes, and again, it's not a prophetic, but maybe there's some people in this place this morning that don't sleep very well. And that might be because of insomnia, and that might be because of, of problems, of difficulties, of worries. And I want to pray over, you know, uh, that when I finish. God will just give you rest. Just give you rest. Finally. The world we live in is a very trying and complicated place, isn't it? I've said this before, but the world from five years ago to now has massively changed. Hugely changed. With COVID, debt, prices going up, war. In the last four or five years, it's changed so dramatically. Yet God hasn't. He's the same yesterday. He's not changed. Has all these things happened changed the fact that God's on the throne? Has his word changed? So that means even with all these difficulties going on, I can still come to him and I can still find rest. And I can still come and just hang out with God. He wants you to find comfort. He wants you. Listen, here's the thing. He wants you to experience joy. Joy. I've shared the story before. I'll share this as a finish. When we moved um, to um, Nottingham in a church there, and I uh, we went to Elam Conference, and um, I shared, uh, forgive me if you've heard the story, I shared a room with another pastor and the senior pastor, so bunk beds, and of course the senior pastor had his own bed, and um, the bigger one, and uh, do you remember? And I was on the top bunk, and this was the first night. I'd only been in ministry with these guys one week. On the top bunk, 11 o'clock at night, I started laughing. One hour. Couldn't stop. My belly ached. My face ached. It was just one hour. And the senior minister's looking at me, thinking, who have I just employed? What have I done? And the guy below me, he thought it was hilarious. Carl thought it was hilarious. And he's just laughing and kind of kicking the bottom of my bed. And it was just hilarious. But you know what? God broke something in the laughter and put joy in my life where it had not been before. Some of you got to learn to laugh. Because if you don't, I'm going to tell the best Irish jokes that I know. Some of you are going to have to learn to laugh a little bit more and be a little bit joyous. But guess where you find it? In a place of rest. In a place with him. In a place in his presence. That's where you find rest. So I'm going to finish there. And I want to take some time just to pray. Look at that. Three minutes to spare. Not done yet, though. 
I'm just going to take a moment just to pray. So I'm just going to ask every head be bowed, every eye be closed. And I just want to pray for a moment, maybe those people who have maybe some sleepless nights. And if that's you this morning, I'm going to just place your hand over your heart. I don't want to pray that those sleepless nights stop, that tonight you sleep well. But I want to encourage you before you go asleep to take your word, take your Bible and just begin to read it and say, God, I just surrender any burdens, any difficulties, any problems. God, I just surrender them to you right now, whatever they may be. And you give it to him and say, God, now as I lay my head down to sleep, God, I rest in your presence. And so, Father, in the next few days, or maybe next Sunday, we get to hear of people's sleep patterns have just changed because they found rest in you. Father, for the rest of us, God, I just pray and ask in Jesus' name that, God, as we step into this year, the week's already gone of it, but, Father, we would learn to rest, then work. We would learn to live out of relationship with you and not leave you to the end of the day. That we'd find rest we'd find power, we'd find your presence, that we'd surrender every single day of our lives to you. We'd pick up our Bibles, we'd learn what it is to praise and worship every day, we'd learn what it is to read your word every day. God, we just give it to you. And so I'm just gonna be quiet for a few moments. And I'm just gonna let the gentleness of the presence of God just minister to you and just begin to talk to you So, Father, I pray for your word over your children this morning. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, come to me, all who are weary and all who are burdened, and I will give you rest. Rest is offered, and to rest with him. Father, I pray that we would take this invitation every day of our lives, come before you and rest with you and rest in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can I invite the music team to come back? Hi guys, um, b before we fi finish the service, I just wanted to um, say what an important thing has been done um, in the church today in terms of leadership. So uh, I'm quite glad my boy is not here because, um, uh, yeah, what, what I want to say, he is a true worshipper. He um, has done this from uh, a, a youngster, so from a young teen. Um, Jane and I have listened to him play his guitar and worship in, in our home. Um, so him being recognized by Phil, together with a couple of other people who have been created as deacons, is really significant for the church. When Elim look at this church now, they will see Phil as the elder. They will see three deacons. There is now a strength. Daniel, just come here for a sec. <laughs> he wasn't there. 
this is my own dear son with whom I am pleased. I, I said it the other day to Andrew, so you're, you're not alone in that. But, um, but yeah, we're just talking about the significance of appointing deacons within the church. So uh, the, the church has been for a short period of time without formal leadership, but it is now in place. And I want to thank Phil for doing that. It's something I encouraged him to do. Uh, there were a group of us that appointed him four and a bit years ago now. And in all that time, I have encouraged him to bring people in to recognize the Holy Spirit at work within them and to give them a place of authority within this church. I am delighted that today he has done that. So the, my, my next encouragement to you, again, you know exactly what I'm going to say. I've been saying it to you for four years. Please appoint elders. Bring them to the church so that the church can uh, formally vote them in. We have two people. Chica has, um, because of her role, she has an entitlement to sit at the top table. She has no vote. Um, Rachel, again, uh, has no vote. Within the formal ELIM setting, we now have four people that do vote on what is happening in the church, and I am delighted that that has happened. Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Will. Um, just on that, as a minister in training, she does have a vote. She's an elder um, within it, so that's the only difference in that. Uh, we are looking at eldership. We continue to look at that. Um, it's a step forward for us as we begin to look into that. So we really do value your prayers as we look to grow and expand um, the leadership team. But it's an exciting day. It's something God is doing in us and through us. So as we, in the next couple of weeks, we'll get a time to meet together and begin to work some of the stuff through in 2023. We really do value your prayers, you know, and uh, so really do appreciate that. Can we just, um, yeah, no, let's, let's worship. Let's stand. Do that at the end. Come on, let's just stand. Let's just worship. Let's take some time just to bless God.
So Father, as we go out into another week, be with us. Go before us. Strengthen us. Give us opportunities to share your love. And may we in turn, Father, just find time with you every day to be at rest. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just be seated for one second. We're just going to turn the media off to make this.